Hello everybody, I am back with yet another video. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about some of my personal favorite games of 2011. And my goodness, were there a ton of games that came out this year. Uh, some really, really great games that I got to play, but unfortunately, about 80% of the games that I wanted to get to play, um, I've not had a chance yet to buy or even play, just because I was in college. And a lot of these great games ended up coming out towards the end of the year. But there was still... A nice handful of games that came out in the beginning, uh, the first half of the year that I got to play, and um, I'm going to share my thoughts on those. But I just want to, you know, say real quickly that um, if I don't mention a game that you perhaps really enjoyed, um, you know, don't don't feel bad or don't get upset. Um, you know, like I said, there are several games that I've not had a chance to play that I do want to get to play, but I probably won't um, be able to play those games until probably this summer. But uh, some of those games are, you know, Rayman Origins just looks absolutely gorgeous. And I love Rayman 1 and 2, so I'm sure I'll enjoy that one. Uh, Saints Row the Third looks great. Of course, Zelda Skyward Sword looks awesome. Uh, and so many others. So just don't get upset if I don't mention maybe your favorite game of the year uh, here. You know, because maybe I didn't even play it. So or perhaps I don't even know about it. So let me know. Um, of course, guys, as always, comment, leave a video response, whatever it may be. Let me know what your favorite games are of 2011. But I'm going to go ahead and get right started here. Now, I want to let you guys know that some of the games that I are going to, you know, deem my, some of my favorite games of the year, I actually don't have the physical copies with me because they are in uh, my college dorm room. But, um, you know, I'm going to start with some of those games first. The first one being Okami Den came out early in the year on the Nintendo DS. Just looks absolutely gorgeous uh, with just these crazy cel-shaded graphics. Um, basically, the game is a spiritual successor to Okami, which came out on the PlayStation 2 and Wii. And basically, the game's events take place about nine months after Okami. And uh, someone attempts to summon Amaterasu to help basically defeat the demons that have returned uh, as a result of the events that took place in Okami. And um, after they try to summon Amaterasu, Chibiterasu, who is the wolf child of Amaterasu actually appears, and, um, you know, that's kind of where the story leaves off. So basically, you get to control Chibiterasu. Um, it's an action-adventure game, very similar to Zelda. Uh, definitely brought back some memories from the Ocarina of Time, just the puzzle-solving elements, and uh, just the world itself really reminded me of uh, Zelda the Ocarina of Time. These children basically ride on Chibiterasu throughout this world, and um, you just go around solving different puzzles, helping different people out from town to town. And uh, like I said, it's very similar to the Ocarina of Time. You're just fighting these different spirits that have appeared and trying to rid them of this basically entire world. Now, the game is very extensive. Um, I believe Steps to Death did complete the game, but it took her over 30 hours. I myself only put in 11 hours into the game, and I felt um, I definitely got a very nice gameplay experience from it. And I definitely knew um, what the game kind of entailed, but um, another one of the great central features of the game is being able to draw um, with the celestial brush, and this is basically essential to um, solving puzzles and defeating certain enemies because uh, you basically, the, the entire game pauses and it goes into this almost like um, ancient scroll parchment looking thing, and you basically have to trace that celestial brush in a certain amount of time to bring to life this kind of spirit um, in order to help you defeat an enemy or perhaps solve the puzzle. It's really, really cool, and definitely makes really nice use of the Nintendo DS uh, stylus feature. So I thought that was really cool. I really did enjoy Okami Den, and if you enjoy action-adventure games with really colorful, artsy graphics, um, very similar gameplay to The Ocarina of Time, I strongly recommend that you guys pick up Okami Den. I don't believe it's too expensive. I don't believe it's gone up in price. It's developed by Capcom. You really can't go wrong. Another one of my favorite games I'm going to speak very briefly about was Pokemon Black and White. Um, I personally got Pokemon Black, and um, I really did enjoy it. You know, it was Pokemon. It really, the formula hasn't changed much over the years, but um, some of the added features of Pokemon Black were the 3D worlds. Um, basically, you kind of see some of the buildings um, from a 3D perspective. I thought it was really cool. It was a nice little addition to the series. Um, one of the additions that I didn't particularly like was the three versus three Pokemon battles, um, because basically on the two versus two Pokemon battles, each Pokemon can attack, but on the 3v3, 
um, only one attacks, and then you can kind of cycle through each Pokemon. So it's really, I mean, it's essentially no different than the Pokemons being in their Pokeballs, and then you swap them out. Um, so it really wasn't anything new or creative, in my opinion. I thought it was kind of, um, I don't know, kind of unnecessary, to be honest, and I didn't really enjoy that. But, um, you know, a definitely nice new roster of Pokemon. Uh, some really, really cool looking ones. Um, and, you know, the starter Pokemon I actually thought were uh, pretty cool. Taepig, uh, I thought it was just adorable. It was really um, a nice little starter Pokemon. But um, it, it's Pokemon. The formula, like I said, hasn't changed much. But you can't go wrong with Pokemon. Uh, so I had to include it. Now, moving on to the 3DS, there's an unbelievable library of games already. I don't care what anyone says. There really is a great list of games. And I'm sad to say that I haven't played Star Fox um, 64 3D yet. I haven't played Super Mario 3D Land, um, Mario Kart 7, uh, Pokemon Rumble Blast. You know, so many games that I still need to and want to play, I haven't had a chance to. But some of the games that I did have a chance to play, two in particular I'm going to talk about that perhaps you haven't played because they're not, you know... AAA titles that people were running out to get immediately. Uh, one of them is Ghost Recon Shadow Wars, which, which is actually a launch title. And man, this game really blew me away. Sent to me by Stormcloud Reigns. Thank you, Storm. Uh, it's a tactical RPG, very similar to Advance Wars. But um, it's just very just addicting gameplay. Um, the missions can last anywhere from a few minutes to even an hour. And um, just really, really fun game. I was very uh, kind of blown away at how fun this game was. Uh, so if you can pick that game up, I definitely recommend it. I mean, I think it's selling on Amazon for uh, less than $20 right now. So definitely, if you enjoy Advanced Wars, Final Fantasy Tactics, things like that, try that game out. It's the actually next one a lot of fun. being a very, very good fighter. I've talked about it in my other videos, and that is Dead or Alive Dimensions. Awesome game. Graphics look just freaking awesome, especially in 3D. I actually play the 3D jacked all the way up, which I don't use it in many of my games when I play on the 3DS. But Dead or Alive Dimensions, I actually do. It looks great. You have a great roster of characters. Uh, Ryu Hubashu, or however you pronounce his last name, from Ninja Gaiden is my favorite character. Um, but it's really great game. Uh, like I said, a nice roster of characters. A great variety of stages to choose from. You even have a stage um, from the Metroid games, which was really cool to play in. I was kind of disappointed that we didn't see Samus as a character that you could play as. But, you know, nonetheless, it's, it's a great game. And uh, like I said, it's another in inexpensive game that you could get uh, for pretty cheap these days. Uh, there is a slowdown, obviously, when you turn the 3D on. But when you turn the 3D off, characters are moving like a million miles an hour. It's really great. Excellent fighting game. Offers a lot of variety of gameplay. Um, you know, you have your traditional arcade mode. You have um, challenge mode. You have, like, survival mode where you have to just survive um, basically fighting from, like, one at... You know, you fight someone... How do, how do I explain this? This is so weird. You do like 50 straight rounds um, of enemies or whatever. Um, obviously, you're only fighting one person at a time, but they get, you know, kind of harder each round. The, diff the enemy gets basically that much more difficult to defeat. And then um, there's a few different versions of the survival mode going all the way up to 100 enemies straight in a row which took me forever. I actually lost like 98, which really was frustrating, but a great game offers a ton of gameplay and, um, you know, a lot of variety in characters and uh, stages to choose from, so you cannot go wrong with Dead or Alive Dimensions. The next game I'm also going to speak pretty briefly about, that's Kingdom Hearts Recoded. I really did enjoy this game. Um, actually, my uh, I shouldn't say it's my first favorite. It's, it's my second favorite handheld Kingdom Hearts behind uh, Birth by Sleep, but I thought there were some really nice uh, additions to gameplay in this game. Uh, I thought Tatsuya Namara really went off the beaten path. Instead of just button mashing like you usually do in a Kingdom Hearts game, there were some really cool turn-based boss battles, which I thought was really cool. There were some uh, side-scrolling platforming elements in the game, as well as vertical shooting elements, which was, so it was really, really nice cool. to kind of, you know, break away from the original action RPG, uh, hack and slash, constant button mashing Kingdom Hearts formula, which I do enjoy, but uh, straying away from that, uh, to implement some new gameplay elements which I thought was really, really cool. So I commend uh, Tetsuya Namaro for doing that. And I thought it was pretty successful. It was about, a, you know, an 8 to 10 hour game for me. And uh, there weren't really any many new um, Disney worlds, but um, it's still a really enjoyable game. And definitely the ending 
had a nice connection between some of the other Kingdom Hearts games. That's all I'll say. Another game that really actually great. just started up last night, I've only put about an hour into it, and that's Dissidia, what is this, Diodesum 012 Final Fantasy, whatever the heck the title is, you guys know. Um, I just basically call it Dissidia 2. Um, an amazing roster of characters featuring characters from Final Fantasy 1 all the way to Final Fantasy 13 with lightning. So awesome. The story mode in this is just just mind-blowingly cool. How they connect all of the characters, uh, kind of light versus darkness, good characters versus bad characters, good, evil, whatever you want to say. Uh, but it's really cool how they kind of connect all of that together as if all of these people knew each other from the beginning. It is so cool. Um, like The battle system is a little complex, and it definitely takes some time to get used to. But it wasn't as steep a learning curve as I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, you basically are on this grid system for each chapter, and you kind of move the character on the grid system, um, and when you interact with, like, an enemy, then it goes into a completely different sequence. You go into this basically different arena where you fight someone. And, um, so it's kind of like Final Fantasy Tactics, but instead of, like, when you get to an enemy and you attack them and just attacking them, you actually go into a whole different kind of world and actually fight them, action RPG, like, crazy 3D fighting battle, whatever, it's just mind-blowingly awesome. Um, but like I said, a humongous roster of characters in this game. It is absolutely incredible how many characters there are. Um, I've only played as Lightning so far, um, but I am just so excited to fight as Zidane from Final Fantasy IX because it's my favorite Final Fantasy game. But the graphics in this are amazing, especially the graphics in the cutscenes. The cutscenes are just, it's like watching a movie. It is so amazing. But, um, like I said, guys, Dissidia 2, a great roster of characters, a very interesting story, a little bit complex battle system, but once you get the hang of it, uh, you know, it's like anything else. It's very addicting, very easy to get used to um, once you have the hang of it, and I'm really enjoying it so far, and I've only put a little over an hour into it. But, um, really cool game. Came out actually on my birthday this year, the next game. So many people have deemed Game of the Year. It's unbelievable. And that is the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I don't actually own this game. This is my sister's boyfriend's copy, but he let me borrow it over Christmas break, which was so nice of him. What do I, where do I begin? I just put 30, over 30 hours into Oblivion, and then I hopped right into this. And I didn't think I was going to be hooked. But my goodness, when you start this game, the beginning of this game is so much more gripping than Oblivion was. Not that the beginning of Oblivion wasn't, um, you know, good by any means. I thought the beginning of Oblivion was kind of nice. You're in that prison cell or whatever, um, and you kind of escape through the sewers. I thought that was cool. But the beginning of this really sets the tone for what the rest of the game entails. You know, you see that dragon attacking this town, and I'm completely spoiling it for people that haven't played it, but most of you probably have. And um, it was just so cool, and it just really set the mood, and you just really got into the game. It really felt like you were actually in Skyrim. It was just so cool. And uh, once you kind of get out on your own and you escape that city, and you're on your own to do whatever you want, it is unbelievable. The graphic, this game graphically has improved so much over Oblivion. It's unreal. Like, seriously, guys. I mean, it's crazy. When you stand on a mountain, you're just gazing across this expansive um, land, and you can just see what it seems like for miles. It's crazy how just beautiful Leveling it looks. Up like in this game kidding. is another thing that happens much more quickly, which I think is awesome because in Oblivion it seemed like forever before you actually leveled up. But um, in this game it happens much more quickly, and uh, the menu system and leveling up your character and the level of detail that it is there is um, to upgrade your character. There's so many different things that you can focus on, different abilities and skills. I felt was um, just a much better improvement upon Oblivion. Like I said, not that Oblivion it was bad by any means, but in Skyrim it's just so much more detailed and so much more in-depth. There's so much more you can do with your character. Uh, it's just so cool. You know, I can't see anyone getting the same um, experience from this game because there are so many different ways to play the game. I'm only like two hours in right now, so I really can't speak, and, um, you know, I can't give this game a, a full kind of full-fledged opinion, but from what I've played so far, guys, it has blown me away. Um, I've already been in a few dungeons, and it's crazy how it's, the level of detail in them is just mind-blowing, because as all of you know who have played Oblivion, 
every dungeon in Oblivion looked the exact same. You know, and, you know, for the time, that's not, you know, not a bad thing, but just recently playing it for the first time for me, um, it kind of got a little ridiculous and a little boring, but in this, it's not the same. It's completely different. Every dungeon looks different, and the level of detail in each is just crazy. Um, I don't even know what else to say. It's it's amazing. I definitely understand all the praise the game is getting. I'm not deeming it my game of the year by any means, but I definitely understand why people are doing so because the game, um, you know, when it held in comparison with Oblivion, it just blows it out of the water completely. But um, I still like Oblivion. But Skyrim, my goodness, guys, excellent game. Um, you know, I hands down to Bethesda for developing this game. It's it's good. It's all right, guys. Oh, I already told you guys um, in my Christmas pickups video that I was deeming this my game of the year. And after putting, I think, 14 hours into it, I've beaten it. I've beaten most of the side missions. And my gosh, guys, was this game amazing. Batman Arkham City. Holy crap. The end to this game was mind-blowing. That's all I'll say. It was just so amazing. Um, and leading up to that, the game was just fantastic. Um, the, you know, the, the combat system is very similar. Uh, just kind of button mashing and, of course, using your counter when you see, like, the little blue stuff over the enemy's head. You know, it's very similar to Batman Arkham Asylum. But, um, you know, just the story itself was so much different and um, just gripping. I mean, it just seriously, you did not want to put the controller down. You wanted to find out what was going to happen next. that impressed me most was how the developers of the game included all of these villains from the Batman um, kind of universe, and it made sense. It wasn't like they were just there to be there. Like, they... It made sense for each and every one of those characters to be in the place that they were, and I thought that was awesome. And another great addition to the game that I thought was going to be kind of unnecessary was Catwoman, but that was a nice kind of, like stray away from the actual Batman campaign. Um, you know, they didn't just, like, completely pause the game and just be like, all right, now you're going to play as Catwoman. Um, it made sense where they paused the game and were like, okay, now you're going to go play as Catwoman. And uh, as those stories kind of intertwined, I thought it really made sense as well. And uh, it was very well done. Um, you know, this game completely just blew me away. Um, I had extremely high expectations, and they still managed to, um, you know, just blow my mind, um, exceed my expectations without a doubt, and uh, I cannot recommend this game enough. If you've not played Arkham Asylum, though, do not sleep on that game. Do not just overlook that and be like, oh, I'll just go to Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. Not that it's necessary to play Arkham Asylum, but um, it's definitely an excellent game, and I think you need to play it in order to see how much better Arkham uh, City is, because it really is that much better, in my opinion. And uh, especially being able to just roam the city, I thought was really, really cool. Uh, just being able to, like, help some of the um, political prisoners that are being attacked by some of the other prisoners. Um, and just being able to just glide from building to building. And then, of course, the Riddler puzzles. They're scattered all over the city. And there are just an unbelievable number of them. I mean, when you solve one, it seems like, you know, okay, I've solved, like, hundreds of these. It seems like there can't be any more. But there really is. There is just an infinite number of them, it seems like, and um, there's just, it offers so much gameplay in this game, it's unbelievable, and in addition to all of that, there's New Game Plus, which means you can restart the game with all of your current upgrades, and play through the game again with, um, you know, the challenge being a little bit more, it's a little bit harder, but um, like I said, you have all of your upgrades, and you're the same level that you were when you completed the game for the first time, which is so cool. And a really nice addition to the game. My game of the year, guys. Batman Arkham City. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Rocksteady, for doing such an amazing job with these two games. Um, amazing. Just so did I take enough of your time? I'm sure I did. But I want to thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate the support. I mean, I've gotten, been getting some really nice PMs from people uh, just thanking me for, you know, making videos and stuff. It's just so kind. And uh, I really, you know, um, appreciate those messages and I try to respond to all of them. But putting all that aside right now, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And I want you guys to leave comments below letting me know your favorite games of the year, 
letting me know which games I should be getting first when, uh, when summer starts and I get my job back. And, uh, you know, I'll be able to have a little bit more side cash to be spending for games. Um, but some of the games I'm really looking forward to playing are Raymond Origins, Saints Row the Third, Dark Souls especially. Um, so many 3DS games. You know what they are. There are so many of them that I still need to um, play. But let me know some of your favorite games, guys. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And stay tuned for more videos in the near future.